Welcome back to the Doc Talk Podcast presented by Betfred Sports. If you have not done so already and you're watching this on YouTube, hit the subscribe button because there's a lot of content that comes out of the studio, whether that be the podcast, the Doc's Diagnosis, some of our YouTube shorts. So subscribe to the YouTube channel. You won't be disappointed. Also, if you're listening to the audio version of this, make sure to leave a review and subscribe on the podcast network of your choice. That way you can help spread the word and well, the more people that listen to us, of course it's always a good thing. Dr. Rob Zadiska, you know what today is? Sunday. Well, it is. It, we are recording this on a Sunday, yes, but you know what today is? A really good day to drink. <laughs> I, I'm convinced today is a really, really good day to drink. I, You know, if only we had a really good craft beer. Well, I tell you what, I love, you know, I get all sorts of deliveries at the office. And again, they think I'm a distributor at the office and they, 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 I'm going to have to start paying a beer tax at MCL Construction. But I love deliveries that come with handwritten notes. Dude, everybody does a handwritten note. I, I think that is super cool. I love it. Now, I couldn't do that because my handwriting and penmanship is brutal. Only class I ever flunked. Was handwriting? Yeah, pen, Hence, penmanship. That, that's why you're a doctor. Because it, it probably is. Remember the old grade school things where it's the... Two two unbroken lines with a little dotted line yeah. in the middle, and you. Do, oh yeah, yeah. I, I I never got a smiley face on those. Yeah, yeah. I, my penmanship is so bad. They even make fun of me at work today, and I, I try my best <laughs> to have good penmanship. But if all else fails, I just write it out and, and and print it and say, here's here's my copy. I don't think they teach it anymore. I don't think they because turn- everything's typed out now. So I know my kids. They were they were on iPads and laptop computers. In well, like early on in grade school. Well, they got to teach you how to write, though, right? Do you really? I would hope so. I don't think they te- teach cursive anymore. They may not. I my kid, my uh, well. Oh, and when you were in school, did they teach cursive or just print? No, I, we got cursive. Did yeah, you? They taught. They taught it. I. I mean, because I know my. I know they got taught cursive. They didn't practice it hardly at all, though. Yeah, I. I, I mean, I, we, we had to do full. I mean, remember when you were in elementary school? You had to do like a five-page paper, handwritten. Yes, in cursive. Yes. Don't have to do that now. No, no. Yeah, that's not happening. You just type it out, or you can actually, you know, Greta, she has dyslexia, so spelling is not her. Can she Can so, she dictate it? Yeah, they let her dictate it, which is pretty cool. Then you just Dude, run it through. that would be handy. Yeah, no kidding. I, I go, just tell Jet, Chat G, was it Chat GTP? Now, they're not allowed to use that, so she can, she can verbalize it into, like, Google Docs, and then you can do a, a spell check and stuff like that, but uh, that, that, that makes it easy, right? Just... Talk your words, and then it, they just come right out there on the paper. It's God, nice. that would have been amazing. But this uh, handwritten note says this. I'm a big fan of the podcast. My son and I are huge Huskers fans. I did uh, nurse anesthesia school at Brian LGH. Oh, awesome. And they try to make it back to Lincoln each year for, for a game. My son works at the, the brewery that made these beers. It's a small family-owned business that prides itself on making good beer and providing friendly service. We hope you enjoy these. And go Big Red. That's from sincere, Sincerely, Alex and Spencer Bringhurst. Now, these are from Awesome. Well, much, by the way, much appreciative, Alex. Yes. And Spencer. And Spencer. And Spencer. But this is from Jim Dandy Brewing Company out of Pocatello, Idaho. And I tell you what, this stuff's good. It, it, I really like it. So I've I've tried the I've tried their hazy IPA, which by the way has a yeah. It's the I've got the extra pale ale. Mine is called the Berm Turn. So I'm having that right now, um, and that's really good too. This is a six point three ABV. I'm going to have the five year beer next, which is the. Uh, that's the hazy. That's the hazy. Which That's was, a seven and a half. Yeah, we're going to be ripped by the time um, we leave here. The hazy's really good though. Which, by the way, both of these are really smooth. So that's that's a. That's a, that's a danger signal right there when the beer's smooth. <laughs> it's uh, but I mean, it's I I like it because a lot of IPAs, and I'm kind of an IPA fan. I like IPAs to like, me I'm are like. The, well, Co- okay. coffee. And let, let, let me take you through oh, this. You're going to say coffee. Because yeah, well, 100%. That's what I was going to say. Well, in, in my coffee journey, you know, if you go back five, even six years with me, I hated IPAs. I was, you know, a, a, a Bush Light type guy, right? Which I'll but, still drink Coors Light. Now, when I, owned, when I owned my coffee shop, I was like... Um, I need a latte that's flavored. Then you go on to a mocha that's flavored. Then you just go to coffee with cream and sugar. Then you just go to coffee with cream. 
And then before you know it, you're just drinking black coffee and you're yeah. like, this is the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. S- same thing with beer. It's like Coors Light. Then you move on to something else, move up. And finally, I'm like, okay, I can handle the IPAs now. I, the, the bitterness had to grow on me. Well, and see, that's the thing with coffee is that I, I, I saw somebody had a great uh, online post about how like the greatest adult flex of all time is drinking just straight black coffee. It is. It's awesome. And it's it's one of those things now I'm to the point where it's hard to get coffee too strong for me. You don't start drinking coffee, and as you drink it, you cut back. It, it ramps up. <laughs> Same thing with beers. You kind of get into craft beer if you like IPAs. It, it's not one of these. You, you don't go looking for lighter IPAs. The thing is, you want them to taste good. You want to have a good effect off of that taste. And the thing with this one, it's got a really, 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 and I'm talking about the the five-year beer, the hazy. It's got a really hard, bitter punch up front. And man, it's really smooth and citrusy on the back end. I like their branding too. I like these. I, I like these these cans. I like their logos. Some places just do it right. They hit it good. You know why? Because it's very simple. There's nothing flashy about this. It's just very simple. Um, if you ever get to Pocatello, Idaho, because I don't think they're distributing this in, in Nebraska or the Midwest anywhere, uh, but if you ever get to Pocatello, Idaho, make sure to check out Jim Dandy Brewing. This is good. It's really good. We got Big a lot fan. of beer to here to drink too. You think we'll, we think we polish all this off or not? I I do have to drive home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, and I don't want to I don't want to nap in your basement today. The thing about when Rob comes over to the house, though, I, and I don't know if your wife cooks or not, but you, do you, do you ever eat? Because when you come here, that's all you do is eat. Because my wife's always, all I ever do period is eat, whether it's here <laughs> or at home. <laughs> but my wife's got making carnitas upstairs. Oh, today she is. Yeah, you can't. Or was that earlier? No, the carnitas are, are they're getting made right now. Oh. So, oh yeah, maybe I'll just call my wife. <laughs> Come she and Jeanette can hang out. Before we dive into some football, we do. Uh, I, I, I want to get this out there because I didn't want to wait till later in the podcast because I don't know how many people listen all the way through. But uh, you know, you, you've been coming to the studio for a long time. You've watched the iterations of this studio, which is a podcast studio, a video studio, and a music studio. And uh, Owen has recently announced that he's going to have an album release show. How long have you been working on this album, dude? Quite a while. Uh, quite a while on the album. But, but yeah. How long is quite a while? Because I, w- I would think most albums, you always hear about people like, hey, we like buckled down in an English estate out in the country and punched it out in three days. That's that's not the norm. This stuff normally takes time, doesn't it? Yeah, it it, that w- it would have been nice to have that happen. But no, it, it took a year and a half probably to uh, okay. get everything together. Um, is that because you're a perfectionist? No, I mean just scheduling. What I mean, just scheduling well, everything. Well, like you is, and me, Owen does have a day job. Well, N- not but, anymore. Yeah. He doesn't. <laughs> now, he's a full time musician now. Nice. Yeah, with a broken down van. So, and that's my fault because I bought it on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, but uh, what's the name of the album? Um, I, I don't know. I'm not sure yet. Well, they put it on the ticket release. Did you see that? Okay. Yeah. The uh, okay. In that case, I am sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's already yeah. Yeah, they yeah. named it for you because well, I didn't I, know I'm reading the ticket release I'm like oh that's the name of the album okay yeah it's one of those you, you the, dude the problem with this actually is you, you spend all this time to like make this happen yeah. and then they're like well what are you gonna call it and you're like shit that's a whole other thing I gotta figure out <laughs> but uh, we're gonna call it Upstream Upstream I yeah. Upstream I like it yeah so do I do you have a name for your band yet no, no name for the band. No Don't, name for the band. Listen, wait, things... wait till you have kids someday. Because <laughs> <laughs> then the whole naming thing there. I... So if you want to check out Owen's music, it's on Apple Music. It's on Spotify. Just search Owen Justice. But the album release show is coming up on December 15th. To all you people in eastern Nebraska, you're going to have to cross the river. You're going to have to go over to Iowa. But that's okay because you can you know download the Betfred Sports app and make a bet while you're there. <laughs> But it's uh, December. See, all good things happen in Iowa. Exactly, uh, December fifteenth at Maloney's Live. That's on the hundred block of uh, Broadway in Council Bluffs. It's a great little venue uh, to kick this things off. And I tell you what, if you want tickets, uh, they're ten bucks a pop, and we're going to put it in the description on YouTube. 
And you can also find it in the description on Podbean or wherever you can read it. Or if you really, if you can't find it, just email DocTalkSports at gmail.com. It's, it's on our website. And it's on, and go to OwenJusticeMusic.com. It's OwenJusticeMusic.com and uh, buy your tickets. And we'd love to see you. On, I know Owen would like to see you. I'm going to be back. I get back from Italy like two days beforehand. And so we'd be over there nice. watching some uh, – watching, and uh, Daniel Lydon, right, is opening up? Yep, you? Daniel Lydon of, of Dan C. and the Hometown Heroes. Okay. So he's going to be doing a kind of acoustic thing to open up the show. Excellent. There's your stocking stuff, all right? Uh, tickets to the Owen Justice album release show December 15th at Maloney's Live in Council Bluffs. Uh, show starts at 8 o'clock. Tickets available at Owen Justice Music. Dot com. Michigan State 20, Nebraska 17. Rob, I got a question. I might have an answer. A lot of people had questions. Did Nebraska and its fans have a false sense of security? Going into a team like Michigan State, which had yet to win a Big Ten game. I'm torn here on this one because I, I, th- I really doubt that, well... You start believing the own, your own hype. You start thinking this could be a seven win team. This could it's, be. How do you, this could be how a, do you have a, how do you have hype with this team? That's a good question. I mean, this is a team. You keep that, winning. No, and I get it. And the conference is so bad. I don't think it's that you believe the the, the hype about the team. I think it, if anything, you believe the hype about the Big Ten West that it's pure trash and it. It kind of is. I mean, I the thing is though, everybody's got there's some talent there, there's some coaching there. We talked about this last week a little bit. Wisconsin looked really solid against Ohio State for about two and a half yeah. quarters. And then Ohio State pulled away because they just have more horses. You mean yeah. Um but Wisconsin kind of hung in there against Ohio State surprisingly well. Then they turn around and Wisconsin loses again to freaking Indiana. Okay, go figure, right? Yeah. So, but it's it it's not a good division. They're really bad. Now, here is the thing: Nebraska's right in there with your really bad teams. You and I have said this. I I hate saying it's like, oh, did we start? Did we buy in? Did we believe the hype? Were we drinking the Kool Aid? I'm like sitting here going, like, no. How many times have we said on this podcast that? Nebraska, when you look at the end of the schedule, we've been saying this for three, four weeks now. They could win every game. They could lose every game. Every game's winnable. Every game's losable for for them. And that is 100% true. The margin of error here is so ungodly thin. Which, by the way, it's the same for Iowa, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Nebraska. All of them. Iowa beats Wisconsin. They turn around and... Lose to Minnesota. Yeah. Beat Northwestern. I mean, Nebraska beat Northwestern way worse than I did. Yeah. I mean, you, you look at it on paper and you go like, well, after shit, yeah, Nebraska's totally got Iowa. Well, not necessarily. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I just think watching the chatter online and when you get on a roll, you, you tend to get a little overconfident. And I, 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 I'm not saying the team did, but I think the fan base thought, well, Michigan State hadn't won a game. They're going to go up there. Yeah, it's going to be a, a, a walk in the park. I, I, yeah, I'm not putting much on the coaches or players in terms of being overconfident, but fans, yes. I think they, I think, but again, I say that in every, I, I think people understand how bad. This team is. I I see a lot of chatter about the officiating in this game. Well, that, uh, that and the the problem is is that when you have let's say two really really good teams playing, or two really really bad teams playing, the margin for error shrinks down. I mean, it, and that just I mean that that's stu- stupid obviousness. I mean, if you have one team that's way better than the other. You got a lot of margin for error. I, you know, we were talking beforehand about how bad some team, well, how badly you beat some teams. And, and I think about like my senior year, the Wyoming game. That was the, that might have been the worst team on our schedule outside of Pacific, which I mean, I'm not even going to talk about that. Was that, one, the, was that the game that uh, Brooke uh, collapsed his lung? Yeah. Okay. They came out throwing haymakers, landed half of them. And had, I think, a two-score lead going into the fourth quarter. 
we won the game by two scores. I mean, we basically had a four-score differential to win the game in one quarter. And if you're a team that can basically score four times to win a game in one quarter, <laughs> you're pretty freaking good. Yeah, We were way better than Wyoming. But we were two scores down going into the fourth quarter. I remember that game. So I, it's, I mean, that, that's the, the margin for error in a game like that is massive. We can, we can fuck around and find out for three quarters. We lose our quarterback with a punctured lung and still win by two scores at the very end. That, I mean, that, that's a massive margin for error. We can screw up hugely and still win that game. West Virginia, huge margin for error. We turned the ball over five times. But West, still found a way to win. We, yeah, we had five turnovers. We won 31 to nothing. That's a pretty big margin of error. Nebraska against the the rest of the – all of these Big Ten West teams, honestly, all of the Big Ten West – There's zero margin for error. And the bottom half – dude, the Big Ten is not good this year. Well, the Michigan, top, Ohio State, Penn State. Yeah. After that, God, it drops off quick. There, there's, there's not a middle of the pack. There's those three, and then everybody else sucks ass. So all of these games – the margin for error is incredibly, incredibly narrow because everybody is just terrible. And so when you have bad officiating calls, yeah, it affects the game. It's going to change. It's going to completely change the outcome. What I liked about you on Twitter yesterday, and you can follow Dr. Rob at Doc Talk Sports on Twitter, or I guess we're supposed to call it X now, is that somebody tried to bait you into that, or you, you, re- you responded to somebody. You, you weren't having it. Yeah, I mean, I don't, it, well, and I don't think anybody was baiting me too much. I, I think a lot of fans were like, you look for we a reason. would have won the game if it wasn't for the horrible officiating. Yes, you're right. You're not wrong when you say well, that. And the officiating, it was pretty bad. There, and it's there's always going to be missed calls. There's always going to be blown calls. There's always, I mean, some of it with the replays where you're like, okay, that I get it. They called a touchdown, but damn, three fourths of the ball was on the ground. It wasn't a touchdown. I understand why they called it a touchdown. It's just trying to find a camera angle that really definitively confirms it just wasn't there. But it wasn't a touchdown, but you're kind of stuck having to call it one. Well, there's the game for you in, in, in one bad call. So it's I, I get that. It's just, man, it, if Nebraska was just a little bit better – on the O line, if we had just a little more depth at wide receiver, I mean, right now at wide receiver, I mean it's it's the tight ends, and then it's God, it's Malachi and Jalen Lloyd. It's a couple of true freshmen. That that's your pass catching core right there. That's it. By the way, Coleman's getting good. I I, I texted you. I said you can see this kid going to play in the league size speed it's the most intensive coaching he's ever had this is a guy that i don't think he played football prior to ninth or tenth grade and, and the upside here is yeah. th- in this type of kid you want he's, they can he's still a, develop after he gets he's to school. a fr- he's a freak athlete um great kid heavy community involvement the kid the kid dumped shit tons of nil money all into community charity projects. Um, he cares about people. A- anyway, the thing I like about him is he works his ass off on run plays. If you want to see a guy that's a difference maker, Malachi Coleman blocking. The dude just get freaking gets after it when he blocks, and I love to see that. Because I, yeah, I mean, you said before we even started, you wanted to talk about Coleman, and I think that this was the, the the right time to do it. And I, I mean, he just he gets better every single game. You yeah. see the potential, like in two years, he's even a, maybe next year. I don't know how somebody's going to stop him. Yeah, he's a guy that it's going to be a time thing because it's just he kind of went through high school. He had a really really great quarterback, Noah Walters at Lincoln East, who's now playing for uh, North Alabama. Real uh Ryan Held brought him down there when he was at North Alabama. Um, but he had a great quarterback. He had a couple of other really good 
uh, wide receivers to play with at Lincoln East. Erickson was a good wide receiver. He's now playing baseball out in the Carolinas. And I'm sort of rambling here on recruiting no, Lincoln East guys, but it's he's one Spartan of these blood in you. Yeah, I can't help it. He's one of these kids who has every tool in the toolbox you could ask for. It's just he doesn't have the time on the field yet. And now he's getting it, and you're seeing this development in real time. And it's kind of fun to watch, and it's it's exciting to see him develop like this because he is one of these guys that you look at and go, this guy is just a freak of nature track athlete who also plays football, and and he's – the, the fact that he's smart and a great person to boot is awesome, but he's going to end up being really good. I totally agree with you. I, it's, it's, you. You never know until you see it happen with some of these guys who are kind of these insanely good athletes, um, because I've seen an, I've seen a lot of really, really freak athletes who can't play football, who are not good football players. That happens. And, and so I, I look at him, and you got a guy who's a freak athlete, and his ability to play football is there, and we're seeing it develop, and I love it. So sorry. Yeah, well, no, they, Spartan it, love there. You know, we were talking about the officiating, and, and yes, it's easy to point. I mean, you could look at the Iowa State game last night, where a guy was called out of bounds on a punt return. Somebody was watching the Iowa State. Game. Uh, I mean, the Iowa State Kansas game was pretty decent, actually. Yeah, Kansas ended up winning that. Kansas was seven wins, but I mean, a, a guy was clearly in bounds. We should fire rule. We should have got. We we should have gotten. Uh, <laughs> we should have hired Leipold. Um, but at the end of the day. Um, you, you're right. There's going to be bad calls. Not everyone's going to go your way, but it, it was a re- reoccurring theme. Three, I'm having another of the hazy IPAs, by the way, because these are outstanding. Three turnovers again, Rob. You, you, yeah. You, I mean, and you were quick to point that out. Says, you know what? You can blame officiating all you want. Nebraska still turned the ball over three times. You said yeah. it last week. This is one of the YouTube shorts I think we had up last week. Another reason to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just hit the subscribe button if you're watching by the right way, now. Is it wrong that I'm addicted to our own YouTube shorts? <laughs> no. I need to put more up. They're great. Yeah. I mean, it's just a quick you minute. You put them up. I thought Owen did all the work. Uh, no, Owen does a lot of the work. I did the shorts this last week. We kind of go back and forth on who has time to edit. Um, he was building a deck last week. So he, he he's a carpenter on the side. He built he's a, a really nice deck. Man. He, I tell you what. The guy's a, got skills. Built a really nice deck. Nunchuck at, skills. At his girlfriend's house. Bo staff um, skills. But you said it on the short last week that uh, you know what really good football players don't do? Turn the ball over. Yeah. Doesn't happen. I had, you know, one thing I have noticed, I mean, you can see the coaching on that. Every time these guys go into traffic with the ball up by their chest, they tuck it in, arms crossed, both hands across the ball. The co- the coaches are working. They're trying, I mean, as hard as they can. And it came on picks, which, the, you know, this was one of, okay, so we're going to hit, we got to hit here one of the, we're, we're going to come back to it later in the, sh- in the podcast or in the show. But one of the questions that got asked a thousand times over is, is Harburg the guy? For this year, but that's it. Yeah, no, and I get that. For this year, we don't have anybody else. Now, is, is he a great Power 5 D1 quarterback? And I – no, no. No. I hate to say it. He'd be a decent tight end. He's a really good athlete. Do you know who he is? He is a bigger, stronger, faster Luke McCaffrey. Okay. And I say that as a compliment. This is a guy who could play in the NFL as like a, you know, there's only one Travis Kelsey. I'm not saying he's a, he's just like Travis Kelsey, but a Travis Kelsey type. And what I mean by that is one of those smaller, faster tight ends who who's just big enough they can be a really good blocker but this is the guy you're going to you're going to put him out in the slot you're going to get him out in the flat you're going to hit him crossing over the middle who who can catch the ball take a hit from a linebacker and still fall forward you took that last hazy didn't you that's what I was going to drink you had one didn't you no i had the uh 
I had a different one. You said you had the five year. No, I had the extra the, the berm turn. You took the last five year. You mm. son of a bitch. You can have it. I don't have herpes. You can have it. You don't have herpes. That's good to know. Okay, so I'm going to go with the fly hopper IPA okay. now. Since you sorry, took... we, we we chase squirrels around. By here. the way, the Jim Dandy five year beer is a dandy. It's pretty freaking good. So I'm going to oh okay. Well, the fly oh ooh. <laughs> So the Fly Hopper is a New England IPA, which generally tends to be kind of a hazier IPA yeah. as well. Shit, that's a seven percent. Well, good luck. Well, I mean, we're taking the five year. The five beer. year is seven six. Oh, I thought it was. I thought it was six seven. No, seven, this, six. no. Okay, so this is this is like a toned down yes. five year beer. This is like a four and a half year beer. So, are you telling me that Heinrich Harburg is going to play in the National Football League? No, I'm saying he's got the talent to play pro football, okay. just not as a quarterback. Because you, you said before we started recording that Heinrich Harburg would be a great starting quarterback at UNK. If he's going to stay quarterback. Yeah, I don't, think he's an, I don't think he's an amazing quarterback. He's not. He's not. Is he an amazing athlete? He's, he's kind of a freak athlete. The dude is big. He can run. He if he can hit. I mean, he'll put his shoulder down and take a dude out. But and the guy is a freak athlete. He really is. He's not a great quarterback, but guess what? Either is Jeff Sims. He's the best we've got. So I I it's Yesterday, yeah, I mean, it's Nebraska is a, a bad victim of its quarterback circumstances, and I understand why we went after Sims, let Thompson go. But again, it's not like Thompson was this amazing quarterback. I think Trey Palmer covered up a lot of a lot of Casey Thompson flaws. Yeah, you, you know, the bad thing about Harburg is that he had seventy five yards rushing, but because sack yards, and he was sacked seven times, count against the rushing yards, he ended up with a, a net thirty eight. Um, I, he rushed for 75. He, he rushed for 75 yards. Uh, however, you know, passing, just not good. 12 of 28, two picks, he, 129 yards. As, as much as we ripped on Sims and his ability to make reads and read the field, God, I swear to God, like Hart, the more we go here and the more they take the reins off of Harburg, you, you start to see some of the same deficiencies. The ability to read the field – it's like the deep safety doesn't exist to him. And I mean, he's in a hurry at times. Or he just he just he doesn't do his checks. Yeah. I, I just But it's hard and some to, of it, it it's a first year it's a first year coach in this system. It's a new system. They're still learning. I mean it, it's it's one of those things that first interception where he had a Bullock prior to Crate and Prep. Streaking down the sideline wide open, and Harburg floats that pass yeah. way inside straight to this deep safety. I mean, Bullock sees the ball and comes hauling in as hard and fast as he can to try and get there and still didn't get close. If he had thrown it to Bullock, it's a touchdown. But it it it's just – there that's a miscommunication kind of thing. That would get cleaned up by year two or year three. And I think, it, yeah, I would agree with that. We've still got a lot of year one problems we're working through. And I think that's something that doesn't get talked about or recognized enough because you have this really nice, well, now it's a five and two run during the season, which is still pretty impressive, I think. I, they can still get to seven. Yeah. So it's you've got this run here where they've gone five and two and all of a sudden everybody's like, God, these guys suck. This is not acceptable. And I'm sitting here going, okay, they've done some amazing things in terms of some culture changes. And some of these ugly wins are great. Rule had a great quote where he said, he goes, we used to be talking about close losses. Now we're talking about ugly wins. And winning, and I that told you this. That is a great point to make because, granted, it's Iowa, except I, Iowa doesn't progress beyond ugly wins. Uh, well, so. and that's the case. I mean, the, they lost to Minnesota. You feel like crap. You, you look like crap against Northwestern, but you still pull out the win. And I'm like, well, winning feels better than losing. I don't care how it, how it happens, right? I mean. So uh, I'm, I'm listening to the North. I'm, 
after uh, after the Nebraska game, actually, uh, fourth quarter, I was watching the uh, the Augustana Northern State game, Aberdeen, baby. Uh, the announcers were talking about a particular play where one of the Northern State players gained one yard on first down. And Augustana's defense, which has been really, really solid all year. The announcers made the point, they said, listen, the way Augustana's defense plays and the number of tackles for losses they have, we will take second and second and nine is always better than second and eleven. Gaining one yard is always better than losing one yard. An ugly win is always better than a close loss. And it's I, I don't think Nebraska fans are appreciating that as much as they should right now, and I don't think they're appreciating some of the progress that is happening. And I'm sitting here, I, I got to be honest, I'm kind of spellbound because I'm sitting here going like, how did we get five wins with these guys? Because Frost and, I mean, maybe Mickey a little bit, but I thought like Frost wasn't able to do it. I mean – when you guys, you've got NFL wide receivers like Samari Torre, you, you got Trey Palmer, you got Casey Thompson, you got Adrian Martinez, who is, I mean, the guy was a freaking stat machine. How did we not win more games? And I'm sitting here going, holy shit. Could you imagine Matt Rule and this coaching staff, this offense, if they had Adrian Martinez? And Samari Torre or Casey Thompson and Trey Palmer be a different story. Define a Zigba. Well, well, I, don't I mean, think it's you, just they would be killing people. I, well, think We'd about be, this: we would be seven and two right now, hundred percent, if we had those guys. And people would be bitch. Nebraska fans' biggest bitch would be: how come we're not like sneaking into the rankings at 23rd or whatever. Think about this. Nebraska, if I did my math correctly, and I'm from Iowa, so my math may not have been correct. It's a little sketch. It's a little sketch. You guys don't know how to skip. Um, You don't get taught cursive. I did. And and math is is like, that's like Satan's language. I, I believe Nebraska had 13 offensive drives yesterday. Eight drives of the 13 were four plays or less. Yeah, that's brutal. Now, and then think about the, the, the turnovers that are included in that, right? Because that's a, that's a drive killer. Yeah. And you still had the ball for 30 minutes. Go figure. Yeah. They controlled the clock. And that's the thing. There's a lot of stats here that you look at. You look at the rushing yardage. You look at the time of possession. And you, look, and you think they should win the game. I mean, look at the very end of the game. By the way, did Nebraska you think, did you think Michigan State had poor clock management on that last drive? Yes. I, I'm like watching the game going, are you trying to give the ball back? Because this makes no because, sense. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, and just Nebraska wasn't able to take advantage of it. And sometimes you get in those situations. Did but. you think Harburg I, – I, listen, I know it's a tough call. I thought Harburg's mo- arm was in motion on that second to last play. Remember the fumble that kind of took him even farther out of field goal range? They weren't in field goal range. Okay, because I'm George Washington. I'm not going to lie here. Yep. I chopped down the cherry tree. Okay. I'd already switched over and was watching Nebraska <laughs> wrestling at that point. Still Huskers. I'll show it to you. I was, wa- I was watching the uh, – I was wa- I know which – I've seen the highlights, actually, but at that point I was like, fuck this shit. It's one of those things I'm where watch- you- I was watching – I had I had one – I like on the main TV we were uh, – What's it called when you have it on your phone but you project it to your TV? You, you, Screen you're, share. You're casting. You're casting. Yeah, so, yeah I was – yeah, I was. Well, that might be the, the the Android. We yeah, we were. I was screen sharing, so we had the Nebraska versus uh, North uh, North Dakota State wrestling, Big Twelve wrestling. By the way, uh, we had we had the Nebraska and North Dakota State wrestling duel going on the big screen, and then on my phone I had the the Augustana game going. I was like, yeah, we're not pulling this out, and if we do, I'm fine with the win. I, it just it's so ugly I can't watch anymore. So I, I went and watched Nebraska. I watched Mark Manning's team get a little revenge on North Dakota State and uh, watched Augustana pull out win number nine. You know, it's one of those things where it is his arm in motion. If if it's cocked, 
and he's not going forward. Is that still a forward motion? I I don't know. I it, it, it was coming. So if you if you watch it in slow motion, he's coming forward well before the he gets hit, and the ball comes out. I also understand that when those replay officials look at this and the officials are reviewing it, they're told. How would you call this in real time? Yeah, I mean, you can. Th- there's a lot of there's a lot of these plays that happen from well, a replay standpoint that happen in super slow motion that you're like, oh. If well. you're one of these people, by the way, on uh, non-reviewable plays, who take a screenshot and say, "Look at this, the referees missed it." You can't judge something on a frozen screenshot. That's not fair. It's not. And if if you're out there for people who've played, the, so this was. The, the biggest shocker to me going from high school football to college football, that's where the speed jump was. Co- like power five college to the NFL, the speed jump is not there. The NFL is not faster than a good Florida State team or a Nebraska versus Michigan or, or an Ohio State versus Clemson or a Clemson versus Miami. The speed is there. That jump from high school to college, the speed is mind blowing, and that was the biggest thing for me as I made that adjustment. For these officials to be able to make these calls in real time, holy cow, it's tough. I, I tend to not fault officials for the most part, unless it's just brutally blatant. And some some crews are horrible. Some guys are horrible. Some guys consistently make really bad calls. When I look at it, I'm like, okay, in real time, how did you miss that? The face mask against Harburg. How do you miss that? You know why? You may you may have be looking at a line. You, you maybe take your eye off it because so it, it was some, a quick. It was so it was, quick. So it was that. And here's the thing. I mean, I, they don't have the five yard versus fifteen yard face mask anymore. It's just. It's it, it's it's a face mask yep. or it's not, and it's 15 yards. Yeah. They tried the whole subjective. Is it a 15 yard? Is it a five yarder? They 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 kind of said screw and just went back, dude. If it's a face mask, it's a face mask. Did you just kill that hazy? No, no. I was just taking the the top thing off. Okay, just getting ready to have another one. Yeah, okay. I mean, you're four beers in. I'm I'm, I'm on this, one. I'm on my third. Okay. Okay, killing me, dude. But yeah, when, when you, I'm just like you just killed a seven point six no, in like four I, minutes, I didn't, dude. No, I didn't. You did that, not me. Any, well, I had like three sips. Anyway, no, but the speed of the game, I don't fault the officials for missing calls. I really don't. There are a handful of calls that I do kind of think ought to be reviewable. I would agree with you on that stuff. That's not. I mean, it's. They tried doing the reviewable thing in, in the NFL on the pass interference. But, but here's the deal. You'd be going to the monitor uh, all the freaking every, time. And that's why they were like, that. It, what did it last, one season? I think so. It's just like, just... I think it was one season. They were just like, this is bullshit. We can't do this. Uh, I think a face mask should be reviewable. Yes. I really do. I think you ought to be able to throw the red flag, review that, and if it's, it, oh, shit, yeah, you know what? He just had the jersey or the collar or the shoulder pads. It was not a face mask. You said something on Twitter yesterday that I thought was very interesting, and you said, I'm surprised, and I'm paraphrasing here, but it was something in the sense that, you know, Nebraska has some deficiencies. You're surprised it took Michigan State to expose them, not teams beforehand. Did you mean that defensively, too? Oh, yeah. Well, so, and if so, actually, what, are, actually, what are those deficiencies? Actually, no, I'm sorry. Um, mostly offensively, De- yeah. defensively, that was, um, that one was actually kind of surprising for me. Now I, the, the team that I thought did a really good job with kind of hitting Nebraska with sort of those mid-level sort of the, the crossing patterns on all, on the passing plays coming across the middle, the kind of that soft spot in your zone, so to speak, was Minnesota early in the year. I, I was a little yeah. worried about it watching Minnesota expose it. I'm like, God, this this three three five defense is a piece of shit. Tony White's a horrible coach. 
we should get rid of this guy now. He needs to go hang out at Eric Chenander University and learn a thing or two. Eric Chenander University. <laughs> anyway. Um, that might be a t-shirt. <laughs> that might be a t-shirt. Eric Chenander University. University of Iowa. Although that's like the most oxymoronic thing on the planet because <laughs> Iowa actually does play good defense. <laughs> it does. It's all they do right. It's a, but they well, play, special teams are pretty good. Yeah. But they, uh, yeah, how did Chenander come out of Iowa and suck ass so bad as a <laughs> defensive coach? Because coaching and playing it are two different things. Bob Diaco is another example. Bob Diaco was a pretty oh. decent player. Was he really? Yeah. The, the man's a head case. Well, yeah. Just Somet- saying. But you know what? Sometimes you need head cases to play defense. They're, to yeah, play it, defense, yeah. not to coach it. Well, I know. But sometimes you, you put yourself in the right position. Have you see, listen? There's a lot of people who strike gold once and they become like instant stars. Like, oh, got to have that guy, Dan Hawkins. It was it's Chris, the Big Twelve. It was Chris Peterson the whole time. It was. It was. Yeah. And, and sometimes it's that awesome coordinator behind you that's actually yeah. the one kicking. And was it was it Chris Peter or was it Dirk? Uh, K- Dirk Cutter. Cutter. Dirk Cutter, who was there before Hawkins. Remember, he was the one that was winning before Hawkins took over. Yeah, but when 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 Hawkins was at Boise as a head coach, those teams were outstanding. He was only and there for like one he, or two years, though. Well, then he leaves and Peterson stays there, yeah. and you're like, God, Colorado sucks all of a sudden. But Boise still went, oh, oh. It's somebody else. It was Chris Peterson the whole time. And then he goes to Washington and keeps winning. You're like, yeah, it was definitely Chris Peterson. Um, No, I I thought the thing that worried me was as bad as Nebraska's offense was, there's some things they did, whether it was passing, whether it was running. They've they've definitely got some deficiencies, and I thought Michigan State did a really good job of shutting down Nebraska's offense with the run game, the play-action pass. Uh, I, I thought Nebraska did some damage with the read option, the zone reads. That They did some damage at times with that, but for the most part – I thought Michigan State defensively really played a great game. I mean, Nebraska is one of those teams where, I, I mean, you're going to have to score three or four touchdowns to win most games. And and the defense is as good as Nebraska's defense is, and I really do think they're good. I think Nebraska's defensive coaching staff – has done an amazing job. Tony White and his staff, um, I think Knight, as far as being a D-line coach, I think those guys have done an amazing job. I think the problem is is that the defense in a number of these games lives on the field. And, it, dude, if you're out, what was the time of possession in this game? Uh, I mean, was, hold on, give me one second. If you, uh, it, it, was, it was about even. Uh, Nebraska had 31 look at the minutes producer. and 31. Yeah, so Nebraska actually won yeah. the time of possession. Spartans yeah. had 28. Okay. Well, it was close. So that's, yeah, there's a little bit of a change there, though. I mean, that's basically one offensive series more for Nebraska yeah. in that game that we didn't do anything with. Um, Turn the ball over. Yeah, but that's that's where turnovers play in. I think Nebraska's defensive coaching staff has done an amazing job. I, I thought some stuff got exposed a little bit in terms of that mid-range ability to shut down the pass, but I thought they did everything they needed to do. Let, let's do this. Take the three turnovers away. Nebraska wins the game. And, Nebraska, and we're sitting here going, yeah, Nebraska's defense – once again, shuts down an opponent. But you know what you don't get to take away? You don't get to take away turnovers. You don't get to take away. And I get that. But that's my point is that that's not the defense's fault. So if you're gonna, if you're going to just evaluate Nebraska. Imagine being Iowa's defense. Oh, my God. I would If I was Iowa's defense, we'd be walking over to the other side of the locker room and just kicking the shit out of those guys <laughs> every week. Just, I mean – I, Iowa in Big Ten games, Rob, averaged 187 yards a game. And what was it, 13 points? 13 points. Oh, that's brutal. So, I mean, if you yeah. think Nebraska's offense is bad, 
you ain't seen nothing yet. And that defense is is I mean that, Iowa, it's legit. The Nebraska Iowa game is going to be ugly. It's going to be like a 4-3 game. You're going to Somebody's f- going to get two or like a 5-3. Somebody's going to get a field goal and a safety or somebody's going to get two safeties. And guess what? And beat the other. The winner is going to feel good because it's a win. Yeah, that, I mean that's that's the way you have to look. Oh at Oh my God, that's brutal. It, 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 it's, it's just. But anyway, when you talk about exposing those deficiencies, there's some stuff Nebraska has been able to do on offense that's been okay. Michigan State shut it down. Yeah, they did a good job of that. Um, just to keep in mind that Fred is your guy when you want to bet. Now get on in on the no sweat first bet bonus. When you sign up with Bet Fred and make your first wager, get $105 from Fred. Use the promo code BetFred. Terms and conditions fr- apply. Must be 21 plus. Wagers only accepted in the states where BetFred is doing business. And you can find those on BetFredSports.com. If you do have a gambling problem, call 1 800 Bets Off. Check out Connor Orr, who's a friend of the podcast and a licensed sports agent in the state of Nebraska. If you need legal representation. He works directly with athletes and businesses to help them navigate the ever-changing landscape of name, image, and likeness. Connor is also focused on corporate and personal injury litigations in both Nebraska and Iowa. He can can help you work with your business planning, estate planning, and real estate transactions. Call Connor today at Oren Horrigan at 402-408-6488. Our good buddy Scott Strunk over at Husker Hounds has some really good deals for you right now. Right now, all Adidas sideline gear, 25 percent off through November Antigua quarter zips for men regularly $95 uh, on sale now for $59.99 and Christmas ornaments and Christmas tree socks all 20% off through November so if you haven't uh, been to Husker Hounds uh, you're missing out, and he has everything, something for everybody. Obviously, a lot of Nebraska gear in there, uh, but if you have uh, a person in your life who's a fan of another team or something like that, Scott can get you almost any thing you want, which is super cool. Uh, two locations in the Omaha area. At the Superstore at 84th and Center and out west at 171st and Lakeside Hills Plaza. Or you can make it easy on yourself and shop at huskerhounds.com where you get free shipping on orders of $50 and a flat shipping rate of $495, anything under $50. We do want to thank our good friends at Centris Federal Credit Union. They sponsor the Doc's Diagnosis. Another good reason to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, there's a new diagnosis up every Monday and Tuesday. Uh, of course, Centris Federal Credit Union can help you help Help you explore ways to check some of those renovations off your list with financial help with a home equity loan or home equity line of credit. Um, Get in touch with their team today and get started. Visit centristfcu.org to apply or find a solution that meets your financial needs and goals. They are federally insured by NCUA, equal housing lender. And if you didn't know this, we do a show that's live on Wednesday, it's called Behind the Point Spread. We're joined by Scott Spritzer out of Las Vegas. And we go start about 8 o'clock at night. And we take four games uh, that's coming up in the week. And it, it's, it's you can ask questions, all sorts of good things of Scott Spritzer and Dr. Rob. But that's coming up uh, Wednesday at uh, 8 o'clock on our YouTube channel. So another good reason to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Now, Nebraska is, believe it or not, even though they've lost – and are sitting there with just five wins and three and three in the Big Ten Conference, uh, not out of the running by any means for the West Division. It's They've made it harder on themselves by losing to Michigan State, but not out of the running uh, for the West Division. And we're waiting for Rob to come back. Uh, he, he must – don't you think, Owen, oh, he, he, he must have had to take like a horse piss, man. Yeah, he, he, he's been yeah, – this, this is usually a little bit longer than, than Rob's been gone to take a pee. I mean, I mean, do, <laughs> either that or he had to take a shit, and he's not going to tell us about it. Yeah. Well, we'll know. <laughs> a couple more minutes, we'll know for sure, I think. Do you think he ran upstairs to, to get food? It's it's a possibility. I'm I, It's a possibility. I didn't hear anyone go up the stairs, but he might have snuck up there and get a little food. Uh, Rob, we were just... Uh, y- we were just uh, uh, as he walk. I tell him to walk around the cameras. No, he walks right in front of the cameras. <laughs> okay, well, hold on a second. Here. Did you take a shit? No. Then you well, took a horse piss because that was a long pee for you. There, there's so many like double entendres here <laughs> that I'm like, 
long horse. <laughs> like I could take this in so many directions and they're all pretty bad. No, I'm like I, I got to stop at the bottom of your stairs because it's like the, the car, was it carnitas? Yes. We talking about? Yeah. Smelling pretty good, aren't they? Oh my God. Like I just want to run upstairs and eat now. That- Would you say walk behind the cameras? Yeah. There's four cameras. Okay. Or three. See, Sorry. See the curtain right there? You just walk right around that. It's damn near impossible to not walk in front of a camera here. Jeez. Can you believe that, Owen? Just no respect for the for for, for the, the the craftsmanship and the artistry that you're trying to do. Nah, at just, this just, point, it's a bit. Owen <laughs> I is, like it. Owen is space <laughs> inclusive when it comes. Like, he ought to be designing home security systems. <laughs> Because there's like no corner of this room that's not covered. That's true. Like there is no way to not walk in front of at least one of the cameras. What I like about... uh, Plus at my size, I'm kind of a space killer. How do I miss? What what I like about Owen being part of the show now, and first of all, he, he helps this thing out tremendously. He's the visionary, right? Now like on the emails, Owen gets included. Now it's Rob, yes. T, and O. It's like Owen gets like emails directed towards him now. That's because people like him because he's not a freaking cyclone (laughs) homer like you are. (laughs) There it is. There it is. Uh, Up next is Maryland, Rob. And Maryland's been a weird, weird fucking team this year. Dude, first half of the season, all of a sudden. Started 5 0. Yeah, everybody was like, ooh, these guys might be pretty good. They got a tag of Ilo at quarterback. They're going to be tough to beat. Yeah, they started to, their non com, they won. Then they turn around and beat Michigan State 31 to 9. That was in East Lansing. They beat Indiana, which just beat Wisconsin 44 to 14. Yeah, they, that game wasn't even close. Then they lost for you. You're thinking, oh my God, Maryland might be one of those. They're not going to beat Michigan or Ohio State or maybe even Penn State. But they like, were one of those teams that I think a lot of people at the start of the year were like, yeah, we got them. Then you the season starts, and you're like, ooh, we don't have them. Um, they've lost four in a row. They lost to Ohio State 37-17. Kind of not surprising. They lost to Illinois 27-24. That one was surprising. By the way, Illinois is playing, but I think Nebraska's lucky he got Illinois when it did. I'm not saying they, would, they wouldn't win today. Yeah. I'm just saying Illinois is playing better football. They are. Uh, they lo- this one was surprising. They lost to Northwestern 33-27. That one surprised me. Then they got blown out yesterday by Penn State, uh, 51-15. Not surprising at all. Is this good or bad for Nebraska? Maryland, despite losing, still the best passing team in, in the Big Ten Conference. Yeah, This is going to be a hard one to gauge. I, I don't have a good feel for this game at all. Third best offense in the Big Ten. Yeah. I'm a little worried because when you look at them, I mean, you kind of had some pretty good stats here where, where you break it down in terms of what they're good at. They really have a great offense. They do. At, at least from a passing standpoint. Yeah. If Nebraska can – Nebraska's defense, I've got a lot of faith there. The thing I'm a little more worried about is that they're actually a pretty decent defense when it comes to the run. Yes. Now, they can't stop the pass to save their life. Guess who can't pass? Nebraska. Nebraska. Get, the only thing we do okay offensively is run the ball, and even that, we're okay. I mean, I'd give Nebraska, we're like a C, C- minus on the year with the rushing. Okay, if Maryland scores 28 points, does Nebraska win? No. Wow. I don't see how we overcome that. I mean, does the, does Nebraska's offense... Here's the thing. You don't have to have a great defense to shut down Nebraska's offense. That's true. You don't. Average defense. Average defense will shut down this offense. Here's the thing. Michigan State's defense is not a great – this is not this really solid Mark D'Antonio defense. This isn't the 2015 Spartans. But if you look at this – I mean, what year, Col- was it 2013, 2014 took them to a Rose Bowl win? Uh, was it was that 14 because they went to the college football playoff in 15? Yeah, I think it was it was 13 or 14. Yeah. Um, the, Michigan State, yeah, this is not one of these Mark D'Antonio or George Perlis coached 
Michigan State defenses of old. This is this is an okay defense. They're very okay, um, and they they shut down our offense. But it, it's an opportunity maybe for Coleman to have a real breakout game. Fedoni could have a, a huge game, but can and can Harbor thing, get that, it to him? And that's the kicker is that I mean, is Harbor is he going to know where to put the ball that they can catch it? You saw the the reception that Malachi had. Against Michigan State, Jalen Lloyd's catch the week before. These guys have some talent. They can get open. They've got the speed. They've got the hands. You just got to get the ball to them. Is Harbor going to get the ball to them? And without and throwing a, a pick. Yeah, and that's a huge, huge question mark. Is the offensive line going to give you enough protection up front? That is still not a good offensive line. They're Boy, they're bad. I, I feel bad. I I was a little pissed off and gave him an F. F minus. I gave him an F minus. They did not have a great game. They are just God. They are just not good. Seven sacks, Harbor. Yeah, yeah. It's, and, which it could be another reason. If you're running for your life all the time, another reason you make bad decisions as a quarterback. Yeah, you're gonna get hit. And if that's the case, you want to get rid of the ball. Uh, the West Division is interesting because Nebraska got beat yesterday, Wisconsin got beat yesterday, Minnesota got beat yesterday. So that leaves Iowa by itself at 4-2, and two, leading the Big Ten West. Iowa has Rutgers, Illinois, both at home, and then on at Nebraska to end the season. Minnesota at 3-3 three and three has Purdue, Ohio State, and Wisconsin. Nebraska at 3-3 three and three has Maryland, Nebraska, and Iowa or in Maryland, Wisconsin, and Iowa. Wisconsin has Northwestern, Nebraska, and Minnesota. Now, Iowa has the tie break against Wisconsin. Minnesota is going to lose to Ohio State. So in my book, they're out right now, Iowa and Nebraska have the best chance, unless Nebraska can't win at Wisconsin, has the best chance of winning the Big Ten, West Division. Agree or disagree? Sorry, I'm looking at the uh, the Jim Dandy selections we got. There's got plenty a of selections. They got an October. Jesus, you drink a lot. Are you getting this on tape or uh, only just him just shuffling through the beer? I'm yeah. just looking. Oh, so it's a couple of October yeah. fests. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give the oh, – so I'm traditionally not an October fest guy. We had one a couple weeks ago that was pretty good. Yeah. That was actually one of the better October yeah. fests we've had. Um, I'm going to give the October fest a try just, well, because it's November. I, I, what I'm saying is I think three losses will win the Big Ten West Division. I agree. So, I mean, looking at this, Iowa driver's seat, Minnesota's out because of the Ohio State game. Um. Nebraska Wisconsin is an interesting game. Yeah, that's the, that's the game that it, Nebraska loses that it's out. But yeah, but, if the, if, but who, who knows what happens with Iowa? I mean, Rutgers gave Ohio State a hell of a game. Illinois yeah. is playing better football. If here's you look, the, if you look the at the problem for Iowa, oh, there's a lot of problems for Iowa. Yeah. So. All of these teams are kind of in the same boat as Nebraska. They could all lose or they could all win. You can win every game. You could lose every game. Well, Minnesota's not beating beating Ohio State. But, yeah, that's the, that's the thing is that, God, when you look at Iowa, Nebraska, and Wisconsin, they could go 3-0. It's a toss-up. They can go 3-0. They could go 0-3 in those last three games. It's a total toss-up. It makes it it does make it hard because I look at Iowa and I'm like, yeah, on the right day, Rutgers wins that. On the right day, Illinois, who we just talked about, has been playing better recently, is a better team. The uh that that's the that's the problem with this is it makes it really hard to gauge because with what you were saying about Illinois and what Illinois has done recently. You know, on the right day, they knock off Iowa. I, I, don't, I, I don't disagree with that. I do think Bielema is a good coach. I really, really do. I know a lot of people don't like him, but I think the guy is actually a pretty good coach. I'll be curious to see how that game goes because I think if he can come out, play okay on defense, but can generate any offense whatsoever, Iowa's in trouble. 
I, I, I think every game is gonna for, for Iowa is gonna be like it was against Northwestern. But I, I think that's the same for Nebraska. I don't think Nebraska's not gonna blow anybody out. Yeah, I guess I I look at Nebraska. I'm not sitting here like trying to figure, okay, shit, how do we win the West? What's our pathway to winning the West? Like right now, I'm sitting here going like, oh my God, I would love to get one more win for no reason other than the fact I want that bowl bid and the nearly one month of additional practice it brings. That's it. Like I'm still sitting here looking at this going, it's Matt Rule, year one, Historically, he wins one to two games in his first year. I want to see him get that bowl bid just so he can get these guys in a practice situation for an additional month. I'm looking at this as a total rebuild. I'm not, I would love to win the Big Ten West. Don't get me wrong, because guess what? It's an extra week of season that you get, it's an extra game that you get. Like that that bowl game versus that 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 what that bowl game adds. You go to the Big Ten championship game and the bowl game. There, there there's yet another week of practice you get. That that's the kind of thing that you look at these teams that end up going to bowl games all the time. We've talked about this on the show before. If you go to a bowl game every year, by the time you're a senior. That's three to four months of additional playing time. That's three to four months of additional practice you get. That's a full season. So these teams that go to a bowl game every year, if you're a guy that, okay, is like me, that red shirts, for and instance. And that's the value of the bowl game. The bowl games themselves, whatever. Yeah, yeah take it or leave it. It's, it's, it's that additional month of practice. God, that's an extra season for somebody who goes every year. All of your players, if they stick around for three or four years, they're getting an entire additional season of playing time, of practice time, by going to a bowl game. So I'm sitting here looking at Rule in year one going like, holy shit, one month of practice is huge. That's like getting an extra spring football for your team. And and why you want that, the 2024 conference opponents came out and where they're played at, Nebraska's going to be at Indiana, at Iowa, at Ohio State, at Purdue, at USC. These aren't in order. The game, the the, the game dates have been announced. Going to be at home against Illinois, Rutgers, UCLA, and Wisconsin. That's not an easy schedule. No, not at all. That's why you want that extra month of, of practice. That's Dude, why every, every team in the Big Ten time, wants that. Yes, you want that every day, and it's. I mean, every year you get, you get that extra month. It's huge. And for the teams that go to bowl games frequently, it's kind of the whole, everybody talks about how, well, the rich get richer and the poor get poor. Yeah, it's true. If you're going to a bowl game most years, that extra practice, it really matters. It adds up. Um, we don't talk about recruiting a lot on this podcast because, well, we think recruiting is kind of stupid. Uh, and not that recruits aren't important. It's just, I do find it a little interesting. Yeah, but you, but you would agree with me that until you perform at the college level, what you did in high school means absolutely nothing. 100%. Yes, it means just like a number one draft pick who's a failure in the, in the National Football League. What you did in the college field does not mean a thing in the it National Football League. It is damn near a different game. Um, what do you think, though? I thought this was funny because Nebraska going after a, a four-star offensive lineman out of Logan Magnolia, Iowa. Bricks. Uh, and he's not going to Iowa, not going to Iowa State. Uh, Oklahoma's up there. I forget some other ones. But they went and parked the truck. I thought that was awesome. I've never seen that before. That was, pre- that was actually pretty creative. Dude, Logan Magnolia churns out some players. Yeah, Matt Strait. You know, he played at, at Iowa State. He's the head coach there. Good good dude. He's really a cyclone? Good dude. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. but uh, Good wrestling school, by yeah, the way. Absolutely. It always Loma. has been. Always has been. But I just said, I mean, how do, can you imagine Matt Rule? Hey, go drive the truck to Logan just and just, take the, just park just it. Just take the truck there. I actually loved it, which 
Like I had a Twitter post about him early about Bricks earlier this He's year. He's a big. He, I mean, dude, I, it showed him with the rest of Logan Magnolia's offensive line. Well, and it looked like. Have you seen those recruiting photos where they did the thing for a while? They where they'd have the parent, like the dad, put on the uniform with the kid, which was like the lamest shit ever. Like I never would have yeah. done that, but. It looked like a dad with his three kids or his four kids. I was just like, oh my God, this guy, he he looks like he's a foot taller than everybody else, and he looks like he's nine years older than everybody else. What I liked about it, and I would have liked it if any team did it, because I've seen a lot of creative stuff when it comes to recruiting. I've never seen that. I'm like, oh, that's that's a pretty good one. Just go park the semi-truck there. That's Big old billboard. Okay, hey, Exactly. Let's have a presence yeah. in your hometown. It, it got a visit. It got a visit. I mean, no, no guarantee that he's going to commit, but it got yeah. a visit. So, Which, I don't know. That one will be interesting to me because I look at him and I'm like, damn, that there there's a three- or four-year starter for Nebraska potentially. It, and it, you know, it's hard. I've watched his huddle tape, and it's like, I can't watch this. He's he, six well, foot, he, he, he dominates he, everybody. Yeah, I mean, so. he's going against guys that are five ten. Yeah, and, and not even in his league. So you're like, I don't know how good. Of, I mean, you know, he's good. I, so I look at stuff with a guy like him. So some of the stuff I'm looking at is, okay, when he's pulling, when he's running, when he gets in space, what's his footwork like? Does he cross his feet or does he drop his hips? And do those feet get wide with a wider base when he's going up against a safety or a linebacker? Is he? Can, can he get his hips low to the ground without bending over? I mean, those are the things I'm looking for. And he's a guy who has those tools in the toolbox, and I think he's going to do well at the next level. Uh, he's a guy who's going to be a good football player in college. So, um, a couple other things. That but I do like the yeah. Let's take the equipment truck. Yeah. With, it. I mean, it just which if you haven't seen it. It's basically a semi truck that's just like parked out in the middle of a field, plastered with Husker emblems, logos, trophies, players, etc. That's all. Yeah. I, I thought that was. I, awesome. that, that's. I, I like creativity, and that and that, and that did it. Um, after the USC Washington game, Caleb Williams has taken a beating online. He he's the quarterback for USC. He was spotted weeping, and I mean absolutely bawling after the game. And he's taking – everybody's different. But people yeah. people look at males crying and, and bawling and weeping as a point of weakness. They caught him on camera, which I get it. I mean, he did it out which in public. Which he jumped up into the stands. He was with, I assume – His a, family. Yeah, he's with his family. He just broke down crying. I mean, because it's not going the way you thought it was going to go. I mean, and yeah. you do everything. I mean, he had a hell of a game. I mean, you put up 45 points, you think you're going to win a football game at that point. Yeah. I, I'm I'm one of those guys that, I mean, when it's a game, so like, dude, I was. I mean, Jason I, Whitlock said undraftable. I'm like, because. He's, okay, really? I, that's what Whitlock. I thought, too. Come on. Um, no, he's a guy that, okay, here's the other thing. Okay. Two ways to look at this. The guy's balling his ass off. He's a total wuss. I don't think that's the case. He's weak. Do you want this emotionally weak guy on your team? That's one way to look at it. Here's the flip side. Here's a guy that has so much passion for his team, for the sport of football, for his own performance, for how his team performs, for wins and losses, for the potential to go to the national title game, to get to the playoffs, to bring glory to USC. Okay, there's a guy I want on my team. I see a guy who cares. I got a guy who has that kind of passion. Dude, that's my quarterback. And he's gifted. Now, here's the other thing. I also, it's it, it's kind of weird because when you're down on the field, you don't think about cameras. And and I'll, I'll admit, I, I played, so my, the last year I played football, college, or pro was 1999. 
there were cameras then. Now, it's not like you were plastered all over social media. But, I mean, as cameras are rolling, you were always around it. Locker rooms, after the games. There, there's 10 TV cameras in the locker rooms. It was always there. The media was always there. You just kind of you, you kind of got to assume you're on camera all the time. It's the end of the game. They lost. You're distraught. You wanted your team to win. This was this was going to be that big win. You did everything you could to will your team to win. And I thought he did. The guy had a great game. Washington was a little bit better. Dude, your family's there. The family thing's kind of weird. I mean, I've yeah. been around my family after tough losses. You said you cried after the Florida State game, right? Oh, my God. Dude, half the team was bawling after this one. And it was it was a combination of exhaustion, sadness, and just rage. It was passion. How's that? Yeah. Passion's a great word for all of that. Yeah, crying's not a sign of weakness. Yeah, it was that was that was the thing. There was a lot of passion there for what we had just gone through and come up short. I'm a little surprised at myself I didn't cry after winning it the next year. Because you were ready for it. You knew you were gonna win it. You guys knew before you took the field you were gonna win that game. We thought we were going to win every game. Like it, I'm still sh- any game we did not win, the general reaction was shock. It was one of those like, wait a second, we didn't win. What? The- How the hell did that happen? Anyway, but it's yeah, I'm a little surprised I didn't cry after that one. Although we were already performing at a high level, I mean, we'd won four straight conference titles, and at the time that was a tough conference. More reason to cry after the Florida State game than there was the Miami game. Yeah, I'll definitely give you that one. So, I, yeah, I don't have a problem with it, and I I don't think he thought he was on camera. Yeah, never assume anything when it comes to the. Yeah, world. it's it's one of those you got to know in this day and age. But I I I get it. I look at that. And I'm sitting there going like, damn. Here's a dude who cares, and he cares about his performance. He cares about his team. And how his team does, and if I'm a if if I'm a coach, I'm looking at yeah, fuck Jason Whitlock, dude. I I would take Caleb Williams as a quarterback. If I'm a coach, if I'm a GM, there's a guy who gives a rat's ass, and I'll take that any day of the week. All right, let's go back to the producer studio. Time for questions and answers. Uh, we had a lot of questions come in via email, via Twitter. We had some YouTube comments. Owen, take it away. Where do you want me to start with these? Uh, you just start, I put them on top. You can put, if okay. you got some repeats, can I maybe filter them out a little bit. But uh, you know, start start wherever you want. Okay. Well, here, here's a question from me. Okay. From Darren Owen. Do the boys share their beer with you? Yes, uh, they do. I've actually been taking that beer for years. It's been in the basement. So uh. <laughs> I would hope. I would hope so, dude. That now you're not drinking today because you drank too much last night, right? Yes, I drank enough beer for myself uh, last night. Uh, what so was last night? I just I was just at the bar. It was just a good night. Yeah, I just I mean, well, you know what the best part, man? I get home and I'm looking at the clock. And, uh, oh shit, it's one forty seven. Oh, then, and then uh, is. then it's twelve forty seven. Well, then it was one o'clock. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. Nice <laughs> extra hour of sleep. Yeah. Where where were you? Where were you at? What bar? I, I, we go to Benson, just up the street. Yeah, but what bars? Well, we started at the Sydney. We watched a, a comedy show. Nice. Uh, and then we went to Burke's and played pool and darts. Uh, yeah. Met some people and had a good time. It's a little underrated. Like darts. Benson? Yeah. Darts. Or you can go to the, the, the Musette and play some shuffleboard. They got That's a big pool place, too. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. I never yeah. feel safe when I go in there. When but, I lived in Lincoln, we'd always go down to Big John's. Big play, John's? Play pool. Little billiards? Yeah, yeah. i go play pool all the time. And the second half of this question is, and do you hate Iowa too? Uh, no, I do not. I do not hate Iowa. I raised him right. When it was team day, team day at school in the elementary, you know what he wore? He wore Hawkeye gear to, to school. The black and gold, it is a sharp combo. See, exactly. Pittsburgh Steelers got it yeah, right. Yep, so did the Iowa Hawkeyes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Next up. Okay, this one's from Aaron. Uh I'll see. I'll, I'll I'll just read the whole thing. 
When does the QB problem become a coaching problem? Rule likes to stick with one guy, but that guy isn't a QB. He is, at best, a Wildcat QB. They have moved on from Sims, probably an okay decision, so that leaves Purdy. I said this on your show four weeks ago, that the the back half of the schedule will require a passer due to the, de- due to the defenses adjusting to Heinrich Harburg. Is it plausible with this O-line that Purdy could be successful with a run, running back game and a short to intermediate passes? That seemed to be his best attribute last year. Can we win one more game with that system? Thanks. I'll hang up and listen. Uh, that's from Aaron. All right. I think Aaron's you – no, know, you are right here. I just – Listen. I'm, I'm, I'm it, it doesn't matter. You're going to have a completely different quarterback next year. Yeah. I don't, it's not going to be any one of these three guys. That's why I don't think you can say it's a coaching problem yet. No, it's not yet. And the, here's the thing. I think these guys, I mean, in team-wide, they've squeezed blood out of a stone here at this point. I mean, we don't have a good – Purdy's not a very good quarterback. He's not Brock. He is not Brock. Yeah, Chuba is not a very good quarterback – I'm just saying that. Is he the best pure passer out of those three? Okay. That, I mean. No. N- not, none of the three can pass. Okay. Rule has said he thinks Purdy's the best pure passer. But what does that mean out of those three? That's my point is that, I mean, okay. It, it's like finishing... I was going to say finishing last in a two man race, but that's not the right analogy. I mean, it's it it. I I mean, it's like. I mean, when you're the fastest of three snails, that's not saying much. You're still a snail. <laughs> you're still pretty freaking slow. You're going to time your. I mean, we. You're going to time them with a freaking calendar. It just. That's the problem here is that I think people keep looking at this and going, God, is Harburg the guy? I don't think he is. We need to get Purdy in there. Purdy was the third stringer. There's a reason Brock – I'm sorry, I'm saying Brock. There's a reason Chubba Purdy is the third stringer. There's a reason Chubba has seen limited game time action this year. Yeah, he's not that good. Does that mean Sims and Harburg are? No. But there's a reason they're above Chubb on the depth chart. I it's and it's here's the other thing too that I think a lot of fans have trouble kind of wrapping their head around. You, you can't situationally play this out. You can't okay. We're going to put Chubba in on obvious passing downs, and we're going to have Harburg or Sims in on obvious run downs. And do it that way. Yeah, because you're giving away what you're doing. That, and then at the same time, just the, the, there's sort of a warm up, a continuity thing. You got to be out there. The worst thing ever, like from an offensive line standpoint, okay, the left guard sprains his ankle. Zadis can get in there. You're gonna, we got to get Bob out for a couple of plays to figure out what's going on with his ankle. You go out there for two plays, do jack squat, come back off when Bob trots back out on the field again. It, it's, it's hard to go in for just limited bits like that. I mean, from a quarterback standpoint, think of it in terms of how many coaches have tried a quote-unquote two-quarterback system. We got two guys. They're both really good. I don't want one of them to transfer, so I'm going to play them both. We'll alternate quarters. We'll alternate series. However you work it, it rarely works out well. And the reason it rarely works out well is because there's this complete loss of continuity and flow within the game. Like one year it worked well. Arizona, the year it beat uh, Nebraska in the Holiday Bowl. I figure what year was that, 98? They did the big, tall dude. Yeah, they had a a dual quarterback. It can work, but I'm I'm with you. And and I'm sure people can cite us more examples, but you're you're right. Yeah, nine times out of ten, it's just it's not a great way to do things. Another question. This next one comes from Brent, and the, it's he's got two here. So the first one is, is it me, or did it seem like T. Hill was getting picked on yesterday? If so, 
Will this be a strategy we see by other teams moving forward? Yes, and that would actually surprise me a little bit because of the fact that I thought Hill's been really, really solid. I think he leads the team in interceptions. Um, He's been a really, really solid player. Now, that being said, he's a younger guy. I, I think it was more circumstantial that it seemed like they were going after him. But I do know the common the uh the commentators talked about that a little bit during the during the course of the game, just that he was it seemed like damn near every throw was going to his guy. I think it was more the case that I think Michigan State, uh, I'm blanking on his name. They had one guy who's kind of their was it Hunter maybe? Was his last name? I got to look at our stat sheet here, which you very nicely printed. Well, for you me. know that's what I do. I, I I I help out as much as I can, as we have dead air now. Yeah, sorry. Um, no, but I mean, I I think they put Hill, who's been playing really well. I think he's the guy that they put on Michigan State's go-to guy, Jordan Hall. Was it Hall? Must have been Hall. Well, he's he was. You're talking from a defensive standpoint. Jordan Hall was a linebacker. I think it, no. I'm think, I'm looking at their receivers. Okay, so the receivers. It, it was were either Foster. Fo- it was either Foster or Henry, and okay. I think it was actually, um, it was Foster. They yeah. had him on Foster the whole game. I, you know, that's a case. You you take your best guy, you put him on their best guy, and sometimes their best guy wins. It's just better. Yeah, sometimes they win more often than not. Guess what? Michigan State kids, a redshirt. Is it Hauser? I think he's a redshirt freshman. He's not a bad quarterback. No. He was solid. Here's the other thing. Michigan State's offensive line, way better than Nebraska's. Well, Michigan was, State's not a bad the they're, they're They've got some the talent. They're not a good team at all. But some aspects of that team are so far better than Nebraska, it's ridiculous. So, what was the second part of that question? Sec, uh, the second question is uh, a case study in leadership, prime versus rule. At the start of the year, each took very different approaches to the job. Based on where each program is at now, which style has had better results, or is it still too early to tell? It's probably the latter, but it's always interesting to look at leadership styles, and that's from Brent. So I, I kind of lead towards the latter as well. That is maybe a little too early. On the whole, though, from a leadership style standpoint, I think a lot of this goes to, okay, if you want to approach this from the standpoint of longevity, let's say Rule is going to be at Nebraska for 10 years and Dion is going to be at Colorado for 10 years. Rule is going to end up doing far better. It's just, he's a developmental guy. He's a people guy. He's one of those, when when somebody, okay, it, it's just, God, it's not going to work out. We need you to jump in the portal. You are you will never play here. Rule's going to do that behind closed doors. He's going to bring you into his office and say, hey, listen, you work your ass off. We value you as a person. You're you you're, you work you work hard. You're a good person. There's a place for you somewhere. It's just not here. Well, and you and- might want to move on, as opposed to Dion coming in and saying, "Hey, just so y'all know, I'm bringing my own luggage with me, and it's Louie. Well, let's go what he did with the offensive coordinator. Took the offense, the play calling duties away, gave it to an analyst, and offensively, they were like 200 yards below what they've done bef- on an average per game before that. I mean, he, he makes knee-jerk reactions based on It does. And that, guess guess what? I, I mean, unless that uh, – the coordinator previously, was it Sean? Shermer? Shermer. Yeah. Well, the new he, – he elevated Pat Shermer. Okay. I forget who the old guy was. Yeah. Um, who was a head – who left a head coaching position to join Dion at Colorado. Who is probably going to leave to take another head coach or be fired position because he's like, yeah, screw this shit. Yeah, you just demoted me, and it's not my fault that the offensive line freaking sucks, I, and you're I, pissed about the I, fact I, that your kid's getting drilled eleven times I, a game. And by the way, there's different ways to lead, and there's no, we know wrong ways to lead, but there's different philosophies that come to leadership. I'm not saying that Deion Sanders won't be successful. 
Because to me, he's already been successful There's in Colorado. There's a difference between being a good leader and being successful. I've seen great leaders who don't have a lot of on-field yeah. success. I've seen incredibly bad leaders whose performance is outstanding. Yeah. It's not always a one to one correlation. Yeah, one 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 size of leadership doesn't fit yeah. all. Yeah, so I just I, I I think Rule's style of leadership far far better. It fits Nebraska. It fits Nebraska. I, I I think it fits most things. Dion's style, from an organizational standpoint, is it, quite frank. Honestly, it kind of works for quick fixes. The, hey, and you know what? Let's be honest. Colorado needed Dion. Yeah. It did. Colorado. It needed, it needed a quick fix, and they got yeah. that. I want to know is what, where are they going to be f- three years from now, five years from now? Well, if he if he can get out of his own way, he can still be Dion. Yeah. But if you get guys in there that can develop talent underneath you. And he he's his coaching staff. It's it, not bad. It's all solid, long-term college football guys. That, that, that staff is solid. I don't have a problem with that. It's just I look at the comments where he talks about, like, the offensive line, for instance, where he's talking about... have to replace these, them all. Hey, we're going to have to get all new guys in here. Now, I, I guarantee you when he said that, Shadur Sanders is sitting there going like, dude, dad, these are the guys who are trying to protect me. I guarantee you Shadur had to take all of those guys out for a steak dinner for that comment. The well. last thing you want is an entire team... Wondering if they're get, is scared if they're going to get cut. Yes, that's the last thing you. Yes, hundred percent. And, and here's the thing: from an offensive line standpoint, you're sitting here going like, "Dude, the quarterback's dad is throwing all of us under the bus," which, by the way, is bad leadership. That's bad leadership. Here's the other thing: some of that offensive line is Louis. That's. Th- Half that old line at Colorado are transfer guys who Dion brought in. And now he's calling you trash. How's that going to go over from a morale standpoint? I've been on teams that have had bad morale before. And, I mean, and sometimes it comes from one single coach. And it was, I mean, this was an offensive line coach I had with the Giants one year. After his second year, they had to fire him because the morale on the line was so bad. They got Jim McNally. Long he he was he was Dave Remington's O line coach with Cincinnati. Jim McNally, longtime O line coach in the NFL. They got McNally in there, righted the ship. They went to the Super Bowl in two thousand. It's one coach can make that difference. And so I look at Colorado, I'm just like, God, at some point, Dion needs to just shut the hell up and let let these assistants, who are really, really good football people, do their jobs, do some development. Don't I don't have a problem with the idea that, hey, we got to switch out an entire unit because I look at Nebraska and I'm sitting here and I'm going, holy shit. We need an entire new offensive line. We need to get Gatula in there. We need to get Sledge in there. Let's get Bricks in there from Logan Magnolia. Let's get those guys out there. Let's get another four, five, six guys in there and flip that unit. we got to do the same thing at the quarterback position. We need more wide receivers. We got, we got solid guys on the team. It's just... I, I'm not bagging on the wide receivers from a talent standpoint. Just everybody got hurt as the problem. But we need we need way more depth at the wide at the wide receiver position. So I it's I don't have a problem with switching out a whole unit. It's just you don't go in front of a camera and say to the nation, "These guys suck ass." We just need to go get more and better players. By the way, and that's what Dion did. And it, and to be fair, that's what Dion's always done. He's never. He's just been a guy that I it, get it. So it's just different. It's it's the, heightened now because you're not at Jackson State. You're not a TV commentator. Yeah, now you're a power five. You're, you're a power university. five dude. Yeah. And so that's where 
people kind of go, huh, that's but, different. But he got in these fights at Jackson State. I but mean, that's Jackson State. It's a completely different at, level. Yeah, you go look at some of Dion's Twitter battles with other coaches and players and fans and media people at that level. It's kind of impressive. We should do another couple of questions, although the podcast is going forever now. We're at an hour 30 right now. Go to the uh, go to the very last YouTube comment. This was on the short, I believe, of Owen. Did go to the last one. Yeah, this is- yeah, this is pretty fitting because uh, we were just showing Rob the, yeah. the actual play of him uh, hitting Charles Haley. But And, and I'm going to read this. It's not really coherent. Um, so I'll, I'll, do, I'll do the best on, I bro. can. Alcohol is a wonderful it is. drug. <laughs> but someone says uh, comments on your, on your, uh, your lighten up Charles Haley. That's why he is a multiple Super Bowl winner. And he is a nobody whose claim to fame is hitting him when he wasn't looking, not taking him up on straight up and winning, but I don't see him blindside hit. Cool. You're two minutes into your 15. Bye bye. So there, there's a lot going on there. Yeah, there's, there's a lot going on. You know, <laughs> elementary education might have been a problem at that point. But here's the deal: typical, typical you, Iowa so education, right l- there. Last week on the podcast, Rob told a story about lining up Charles Haley, and Rob. Gave him credit, saying Charles Haley has more Super Bowl rings than anybody. Like he's like he can I fill think, up both hands. Yeah, I think I think Brady might be the only but, single player that has more Super Bowl rings than Charles. But Haley, Haley has it with two teams or three teams. Two, so two. Dallas and San Fran. Yeah, Dallas and San Fran. But here, and Rob wasn't trying to say. He just said, "Hey, I had that one opportunity to blow up a, a Hall of Famer, and I did it." We were talking about hits and the blindside hit. What happened are in Nebraska. now illegal yeah. hits? And I was merely making the point like, hey, one of the greatest hits I ever had was one of these that's now completely illegal. So, Owen, was it in the shorts comments or the podcast comments? Because people on the internet, the internet is a wonderful thing. Now, is this the guy who sent us the video? No, 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 no. Somebody went and somebody actually went through the NFL archives and found the one play where Rob lit up Charles Haley. And by the way, he lit him up. Charles Haley had his bell rung. Which, unfortunately, you don't see the hit. What you see is Haley, like, (laughs) off-screen, fly into the frame of the screen and, like, just... Bloop, onto the turf, and it's and he just sits there. If people want to find that, Owen, is it in the comment section of the podcast yeah, or the you, shorts? What was our twenty seven? I think was the last podcast. Yeah, it's in the comments of the uh, uh, of the podcast of the podcast. Which I mean, yeah. I will never compare myself. No, and you weren't to Charles Haley. The guy was he's a Hall of Famer. I was a journeyman and and kind of a sketchy one at that even. I mean, I lasted four and a half years, which, like, I'm happy about. You got a pension. That, you got a pension. Got the pension. See, that's all that. Really I had a matters. blast. It was fun. Oh man, this has been a fun podcast. Has been a very fun podcast. Uh, if you haven't liked the Facebook page, give the Doc Talk Sports Facebook page a like. If you haven't followed us on Twitter, and that's at Doc Talk Sports, you can follow me at Travis Creates. Follow us on TikTok. Yes, we're on TikTok. And make sure to subscribe. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. You won't regret it. And also, subscribe to whatever uh, podcast uh, network you're listening on. By the way, the Jim Dandy Oktoberfest, yeah. it's a solid Oktoberfest. If you missed earlier in the show, uh, get your tickets to Owen's uh, album release show. It's going to be December 15th at Maloney's Live in Council Bluffs. Tickets available on his website, owenjusticemusic.com. Uh, you, you won't regret it. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a fun night. Um, so yeah, check out the doc diagnosis. Make sure to join us for behind the point spread on Wednesday night on our YouTube channel, and we'll be back next week following the Maryland game for Owen Justice for Dr. Rob Zadiska. I'm Travis Justice. We will see you next time on the Doc Talk podcast presented by Betfred Sports. Mm-hmm.